bringing uh, bringing ideas to more complicated data. Right. That was the theme. Thank you. So um, I'm going to talk about something different from differential privacy, which is called Pufferfish Privacy. And our project is called Pufferfish Privacy Mechanisms for Correlated Data. And this is joint work with uh, Yi Zheng Wang and Kamalika Chowry from UC San Diego. So in many machine learning tasks, we deal with sensitive data that is also correlated. For example, when we want to learn from social network data the spreading pattern of flu or when we want to learn from a person's activity tracking data the amount of exercise this person conducted during a week. So in this case, the correlation among the data can make privacy protection harder. And let's see why. So let's look at a small example. So here, suppose we have some, uh, so, uh, some social network um, and the flu status of each person in it. And suppose now we want to publish approximately the number of people with flu and at the same time, we don't want uh, any adversary to know whether a particular person is ill or not. So suppose now I am an adversary trying to infer the flu status of this particular person. If I know this person belongs to this uh, group of people where about 80% of the people there are infected, and <clears throat> suppose I know flu is highly contagious, then I can say this person is also infected with high confidence. So essentially, the correlation among the data helped me transfer my general knowledge about the social network to specific knowledge about this particular person. And this is how correlation among the data can make pri uh, privacy protection harder. And now let's look at what differential privacy will do in this case. So because the basic idea of differential privacy is to hide the effect of single individual in this data set. So what it's going to do is to add Laplace noise of scale parameter 1 over epsilon to the actual number of infected people. As we have mentioned, if everyone's full status are independent of each other, then this amount of noise may be enough, uh, then this amount of noise is enough to guarantee privacy. However, uh, we all know that uh, people's flu st uh, status are correlated with each other. So in this case, when we have a large connected group and when flu is highly, uh, very contagious, then the, uh, this amount of noise may not be enough to guarantee privacy. So instead, we may use something called group differential privacy, where the idea is to hide the effect of a group of people. So instead of 1 over epsilon, we may want to add Laplace noise of scale g over epsilon, where g is the largest group size. So this amount of noise is enough to uh, guarantee privacy, uh, even with correlation. But notice that adding such huge amount of noise, um, uh, uh, it, uh, intuitive, intuitively, it means we are assuming everyone in the same group, their flu status are completely correlated with each other, meaning they are either all healthy or all ill, which is, uh, of course, not true in practice. And when the group size is very large, adding this amount of noise may uh, completely destroy our utility. So in between differential privacy, which uh, is enough to protect privacy for independent data, but may not be enough for correlated data, and group differential privacy, which take a very conservative view by treating everyone as if they are completely correlated, and thus give, may give not enough utility, can we have something in between? So uh, one observation is that in most of the real applications, though we have a certain amount of correlation among data, the average amount of correlation is not actually very high. So if we are able to uh, capture this actual amount of correlation, we may be able to get a better privacy utility trade-off. And this uh, motivates the uh, proposal for Pufferfish privacy, which is a framework with correlation taken into consideration. And now let's look at how this definition works. So uh, to define Pufferfish privacy, first we need to specify three components. The first is a secret S which is a set of secrets we want to protect. For example, we want to protect Alice has flu and we want to protect Bob was sleeping at 10 a.m. And second, we have secret set Q, which is a set of 
pairs of secrets we want to be indistinguishable. For example, we don't want adversary to know whether Alice has flu or she's, uh, she's healthy, or we don't want adversary to know whether Bob was sleeping or exercising at 10 a.m. And lastly, we have this capital theta, which is a set of distribution that plausibly generate our data set. For example, we may assume uh, flu is passed with a certain probability or Bob live with a certain uh, living style. So this theta is basically where the data correlation is captured. And every distribution in theta represents one adversary's belief about how our data is generated. And we're going to protect against all the adversary whose belief lies in this distribution set, capital theta. And now we can define epsilon uh, pufferfish privacy. So we say a mechanism M is epsilon pufferfish private under the, uh, under the three parameters S, the secret uh, Q, the secret pairs, and theta, the set of distributions. If for all W in the range of M and for all secret pair SI and SJ in our secret pair uh, uh, set, and then for all distribution uh, small theta in our distribution set capital theta. So let's say we use x to denote a random variable which represents our data set. So it's a random variable drawn from the distribution theta. What we want is the probability of mx equal to w given theta and si uh, over the same thing given theta and sj to be upper bounded by e to the epsilon. So let's if these two are the PDF for the two, distribu uh, for the two distributions, then what we want is that for any W on the support, the ratio between these two parts to be upper bounded by E to the epsilon. So this is, uh, sorry. So this is pretty close to uh, the definition of uh, differential privacy, like uh, epsilon here quantify the privacy laws and smaller epsilon means we have better uh, privacy. But notice the difference here uh, is that the probability is taken not only with respect to the randomness of the algorithm, but is also with respect to the randomness of the data. So the advantage of pufferfish privacy is that first is uh, allows us to capture correlation. And second, it was shown in the original paper that this definition is uh, actually a generalization for differential privacy. So when the distribution set contain all the uh, independent distribution for data, pufferfish privacy essentially reduced to differential privacy. So the next question we would ask is how can we achieve pufferfish privacy? So there are some prior work on algorithm for a special pufferfish instantiation, for example, the blowfish privacy. So in our work, we proposed two mechanisms. The first is called the Wesson mechanism, which is completely general, working for any pufferfish framework. And the second is a more efficient algorithm called the Markov quote mechanism, which work for the case when data correlation is captured by Bayesian network. And uh, I also like to mention there was a concurrent work, uh, and we're going to uh, compare with this in our experimental uh, in our experiment part. So now, uh, as we have covered the definition for pufferfish privacy, and I'm going to talk about the two algorithms we proposed in our paper. The first is the Wasserstein mechanism. So uh, remember to guarantee differential privacy, we usually would like to add some random noise to the true query result. And similar to the algorithm for differential privacy, we also would like to add some random noise. And we, would, and we need this noise to be enough to make the secret pairs indistinguishable under any distribution in our distribution set. So recall that, uh, that uh, for uh, differential privacy in the Laplace mechanism, if we are given a query function f, we are going to add <coughs> Laplace noise, which is proportional to the global sensitivity of f. And the global sensitivity basically measure how sensitive the function f is with respect to the change of the data set. And similarly, in our case, we would like to ask how sensitive f is with respect to the secret. Uh, the secret pair, meaning when we replace secret SI with secret SJ, how much the function F can change. But different from uh, differential privacy, here the function value, uh, the function, va <coughs> the function value F, is 
is not a fixed value, but it's rather a random variable. So what we're going to compare is the probability distribution of f given theta and si versus <coughs> the probability distribution given theta and sj. So essentially, we need the right distance measurement for these two distributions. And in our paper, we find that the right distribution, uh, the right distance uh, measurement to use is the infinity Weissersen distance. Let's look at the definition. So given two random variable x and y uh, is uh, following distribution mu and nu, let's say gamma mu nu is the set of all possible drawn distribution of x and y. And then for any drawn distribution in this set, let s uh, 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 let's say it's uh, gamma, so we let as a uh, small gamma to be the support of this joint distribution. So first, for any of this joint distribution, we're going to look at all the x y pair in the uh, in the uh, support of this distribution and look at the max difference between x and y. Then we enumerate through all the possible joint distribution in our set and take a new frame. <coughs> so. <clears throat> Intuitively, this quantity measures the minimum effort we need to convert distribution mu to distribution nu. So, for example, if we have this two discrete distribution on support one, two, three, four, we are going. To, we would like to uh, do something to convert mu to nu. So, for example, we can do something like this. First, we move the probability mass at uh, position one of mu to position one and two of nu. And then we move the probability mass of uh, uh, mu at position two to position two of nu. And similarly, for uh, the probability mass at uh, position three and four, we can do something similar. So notice that in this, when we do when we do this uh, when we do this uh, conversion, we basically uh, the the maximum amount of distance we moved is one. So in this case, the infinity western distance between mu and nu is going to be one. And now let's look at how we can use this to build. Uh, yeah. Isn't this equivalent to the statistical distance or total variation distance? It's summing over the values, the difference between the two? Huh? Uh, not exactly. It's not like, um, so we are trying to match, like convert the distributions, not not marrying the, the difference between the, the if, if you If you put them like one against the other, you just need to move the difference pair each one, no? This can be a thing. The DDV is at most spikes, which are very close, but can be in the distribution. Can be moved very easily. Oh, so, the, so how further do you need to? Yeah, yeah, like how far I want to. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, so the way uh, we construct this algorithm is like this. So given any query function f, for any secret pair SI and SJ, and for any distribution theta in our capital uh, theta, we let mu i theta be the probability distribution for f given theta and SI, and mu j theta be the uh, distribution of f given theta and SJ. Then we compute the infinity resonance distance between mu i theta and mu j theta. And after enumerating through all the pairs and all the distributions, we are going to take a supremum among all this infinity resonance distance. And let's say this value is w. We would like to add Laplace noise of scale w over epsilon to the true uh, result of our query. So we can show that this algorithm guarantee epsilon puffer fish privacy. And one thing. Uh, uh, I think uh, worth mentioning is that when the uh, when the power fish privacy reduced to differential privacy, when the set contains all the independent data distribution, the W value here is exactly equal to the uh, uh, global sensitivity of the query function. So basically, we can view what is the mechanism as an analog to Laplace mechanism for differential privacy. So how does the utility compare to group differential privacy? Let's look at a small example. So, how, uh, so for example, here we uh, have some neural uh, uh, sorry, some social network which contain four, which contain uh, four people, and we know the full status of each person in this 
uh, social network, we would like to publish uh, roughly the number of people with flu. And suppose at this moment, we only try to protect the privacy for this uh, orange person. And let's say the distribution of um, the total number of uh, uh, infected people, uh, given the status of this person is uh, written in this uh, table. So if we calculate the infinity versus the distance between the two distribution, we can see that the uh, distance uh, is true, so uh, the Western mechanism are going to add Laplace noise of scale parameter 2 over epsilon to the true count. But on the other hand, for group differential privacy, it's going to add Laplace noise 4 over epsilon because there are in total 4 people in this uh, social network. And this is not only true for this small example, in fact, uh, we can show that the Western mechanism is always uh, at least as good as the global, um, uh, sorry, the group differential privacy, um, uh, the Laplace mechanism for the group differential privacy. Yep. Sorry, just to clar can you clarify, what, what's the definition of X of I here? So, so we have two probably distributions over the numbers of infected people. Yeah. And so what, what are we conditioning on exactly? So, so that is the status of the orange person. Oh, okay. uh, that is the person we try to uh, protect in this case. Okay, so we're conditioning on knowledge of that. Yeah, whether is. this person is ill or healthy. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, you may notice that um, there might be some computation issue for this versus the mechanism. So one drawback of it is that it can be computationally expensive, uh, especially when there are infinitely many distributions and secret pairs to enumerate through. And when the two distributions we need to compare infinity Western distance on uh, are irregular. So to build a more efficient algorithm, we look at a more special case uh, data distribution which is the Bayesian network. So here we look at specific, uh, specifically data that are generated from Bayesian network, and we assume the secret we are trying to protect is the value of every node in this Bayesian network, and the secret pair is whether the node is taking value A versus taking value B. So this algorithm uh, is called the Markov quote mechanism, or MQM, which I'm going to cover next. So I'll illustrate how this MQM algorithm work on a special case Bayesian network, namely a Markov chain. So here our distribution set consists of Markov chain of uh, length n, so the node is x1 to xn, and each lie in some state space 1 to k. We may potentially have a lot of di uh, different Markov chains of di uh, different transition matrices included in theta. And the secret we are trying to protect is the value of any xi, and the secret pair is at either the xi is taking value s versus taking value t for any st pair and for all xi. Uh, uh, here we further assume our query function is one Lipschitz, for example, the counting query, and this uh, assumption can easily be extended to any Lipschitz function. The intuition of MQM comes from observing the property of a Markov chain. So suppose we have this Markov chain, and at this moment, we only try to protect the privacy for this black node, xi. So as we have mentioned before, because there are some correlation in this Markov chain to protect xi, it is not only enough to hide the potential information leak from xi itself, but we also need to hide the information leak from all other nodes because they are correlated. But notice that as we go further and further away from xi to the two ends of the chain, the correlation them there become weaker. So if we go further enough, we can essentially find a set of nodes which are almost independent to xi. We call them xr, uh, r for remote. And correspondingly, we have a set of neighbor nodes which are closer to xi. We call them xn and n for a neighbor. So this set of nodes may be uh, more highly uh, correlated with xi. And in between, we have these two nodes as a separation between the remote and neighbor. We call them xq. So because the, uh, the correlation between xi and x uh, neighbor, x remote, they are of different level, we're going to try to uh, hide the potential information leak in these two sets uh, uh, 
using two different ways. So for X remote, what we're going to do is to use a small correction factor to hide the potential information leak. And for the neighbor node, we are going to take a conservative view by treating them as if they are completely correlated with XI, just similar to group differential privacy. So to, form, uh, to, um, to uh, convert this intuition to a formal algorithm, there are basically three questions we need to answer. <coughs> The first is how do we uh, how do we formalize the separation between the neighbor and the remote set? And second is what is the small character factor we are going to use for X remote? And lastly, what should we do for X neighbor? So I'm going to answer them one by one. So first, we formalize the separation by define uh, by exploring the uh, structure of the Markov chain. So we define some uh, notion called the Markov quote. So for a set of node xq, we say it is a Markov quote for xi if first deleting xq break the chain into two parts, x remote and x neighbor where xi is contained in x neighbor. And second, given xq, xi and x remote, they are independent of each other. So in this case, for this xi, if we take, uh, take this two node as our Markov quote, then we can see that it break our chain into this gray and blue parts corresponding to neighbor and remote node. And also we can see that if we are given XQ, then XI and remote, they are independent of each other. And second, let's look at the small correction factor. So here we find that the right notion to use is something we define as the max influence. So for XI and any set of node XA, uh, we define the max influence in this formula. So basically, it is the ratio, the log of the ratio uh, of the probability uh, x a equal to a certain value given x i equal to s uh, and a distribution theta over the probability of x a equal to the same value given x i equal to t and distribution theta. Then we're going to take a maximum among all s t pair and all the distribution and all possible value for x a. So essentially, this, uh, this max influence capture how much xi and xa they are correlated with each other. And the smaller value means they are less correlated. In the case where they are completely independent, this value is going to be zero. So we find that the smart correction factor we want to use for remote. So here we actually do it for the union of the remote and the Markov quote. We find that the small correction factor we should use is the max influence between uh, the uh, between xi and the union of remote and uh, Markov quote. And uh, as we have mentioned before, given the Markov quote xi and x remote, they are independent of each other. So this further equal to the max influence between xi and xq. So lastly, let's look at what we should do for the set of neighbor node. So uh, here we just do something pretty, uh, something the same as the group dif uh, when we do what we do for group differential privacy by treating them as if they are uh, completely, they are going to uh, change completely together with x i. So since we assume our function is one lipstick, when all of them change together, the function value can change by at most the number of nodes in the neighbor set. So putting everything together, this is the scale of the noise we're going to add, where the numerator is the number of neighbor nodes and the denominator is epsilon minus the max influence between xi and xq. <coughs> Notice that this quantity can be computed for any given Markov quote, and in practice, there are many different uh, Markov quotes we can use, uh, so and they can lead to a trade-off between uh, uh, the numerator and the denominator. For example, if we use a Markov quote which is further away from xi, then the numerator will grow because we will have more neighbor nodes. On the other hand, the denominator can also grow because the max influence between xi and xq are going to be smaller. So in practice, what we do is we usually will try to enumerate through a bunch of valid Markov quote and use the one that required the minimum amount of noise. 
So um, to protect the privacy for uh, any node in our Markov chain, we are going to repeat this process for all of them <coughs> and taking the maximum, uh, which is enough to guarantee privacy for any of them. I think Laplace node is uh, proportional to this maximum value. So we can prove that this algorithm guarantee epsilon pufferfish privacy. And in terms of efficiency, <coughs> a, naive, <coughs> a naive implementation on Markov chain will have complexity n to the q, where n is the length of the chain. So um, we can. So uh, we we also want to compare this with uh, the result we can get for uh, we can get from global differential privacy, and we can easily show that this is as at least as good as global differential privacy because um, uh, because uh, one um, trivial Markov quote is uh, uh, empty set. So in this case, the neighbor node contain all the nodes in our Markov chain, and we're going to add noise exactly the same as uh, what we do for a global differential privacy. But uh, in practice, usually uh, the noise we add is not going to scale with the length of the chain. So when the chain grows, um, the advantage of our algorithm is more significant compared to global differential privacy. Now I'm going to show some experimental results which demonstrate the privacy utility trade-off for our Markov quote mechanism. The experiments are done for some real and synthetic Markov chain of different length and different state space. And the secret we're trying to protect is the value of each node and the query function here we consider is the histogram over the states. So there are four algorithms we are going to compare. The first is group differential privacy as a baseline, and the second is the concurrent work we just mentioned. And we have two versions of MQM, MQM approach and MQM exact. So in MQM approach, we use uh, we did some approximation for um, the max influence computation in order to make the algorithm more efficient, and MQM exact. Uh, uh, compute the, the exact max influence and is ha usually has higher utility at the cost of longer running time. The first data we used is some uh, synthetic Markov chain. So here we consider a binary Markov chain, so the state is basically 0 or 1, and the length is 100. We generate the chain in this uh, following way. So suppo uh, suppose we use um, P0 and P1 to denote the transition probability from 0 to 0 and 1 to 1, so the diagonal, ent uh, the diagonal uh, entry of our transition matrix. And then for any uh, value L, which uh, is smaller than point, uh, point 0.5, we define theta L to be the set of, uh, the set of transition matrix uh, correspond to the distributions uh, whose diagonal value lie in the range L to 1 minus L. So basically, when L become larger, this set will have smaller sets. We look at epsilon equal to 1 and epsilon equal to 5 in this case, and here is the result. So the x-axis is the L value, and as we have mentioned, for larger L, uh, larger L means the distribution set has a smaller size. And the y-axis is the L1 arrow of our estimated uh, frequency versus the true frequency. So uh, here, uh, the yellow line is JK17, and the blue-green lines are the two versions of our MQM. I didn't <coughs> plot the result for group differential privacy because it's, uh, it was uh, very bad in this case. So uh, we can see that for uh, all the algorithm, if we increase L, then their utility will become better, which is to be expected. And we can also see that our two versions of MQM works in a wider range of uh, distribution set compared to GK17. And notice that uh, 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 this uh, gray line here is uh, the gray line here is basically the um, uh, threshold which uh, for the GK7, uh, GK17 algorithm to work. So basically on the left hand side here, GK17 com uh, will, will completely fail. But we can also observe that uh, like even when we get closer to this green line, the noise added by GK17 is super large compared to our algorithm. 
And the sec uh, yeah. This is the error on your histogram query. Oh, oh, sorry. I should I, I should have mentioned. So because we are doing a binary chain, uh, the histogram is just uh, counting. So we are just uh, reporting the, the count, uh, the the count, uh, the difference between the true count and the estimated count. Um, so the second uh, set of experiment we ran is on some uh, real life Markov chain, which is uh, uh, we got from some physical activity tracking data. So here we have activity tracking happen on three groups of people. The first is some overweighted subject, and second is some elder subject, and uh, third is some cyclist. The tracking happens around every 12 seconds for roughly seven days during daytime, resulting in roughly three chains each of less 3,000 for every subject. And there are four states, active, standing still, standing, moving, sedentary, and we are going to compute a histogram over this. The, again, the uh, secret we're trying to protect is the activity performed at every uh, moment for every subject. So, um, so here we just assume we know the distribution and we uh, obtain the distribution from this actual data. And uh, I'm going to show one aggregate histogram for each group of subject. And here are the three histograms. The gray bar here are the true frequency and um, the uh, red dots here are 20 runs of group differential privacy. Uh, the blue green dots are 20 runs of the two version of our algorithm. So uh, I want to mention that here GK17 doesn't really apply because their algorithm requires some condition on the transition matrix which is not satisfied in this data set. So comparing group differential privacy and two versions of MQM, we can see that uh, in general, uh, our, our MQM uh, does much better than group differential privacy. So quantitatively, the noise is roughly uh, 10 times uh, away from each other. And um, uh, we can also see that the noise we add is pretty small compared to the true signal. So basically, after adding the noise, we can still see different patterns across different groups. Like for example, some um, like the cyclist is more uh, active compared to the other two groups. The last side of experiment we done uh, is on um, some electricity power uh, meter reading data. So this is from a single household in, uh, uh, in Canada. And the meter reading happens at around every one minute for uh, in total two years, resulting in one chain of about a million. And we here divide the power level into 51 states. The uh, secret we're trying to protect is the power level at any given time. So again, uh, the distribution is obtained from the data. And here is the result. So here I didn't plot group differential privacy because the result is very bad in this case, because uh, the, the length of the chain is uh, very uh, large. And again, GK17 doesn't really apply because the condition is, uh, again, not satisfied in this data set. So we can see that uh, the two versions of MQM uh, work um, pretty well on this data set. And, uh, but for the tail part, we can see roughly that MQM exact uh, perform uh, better than MQM across. So uh, comparing this two algorithm in terms of running time, we can see that MQM exact is uh, rough, uh, in general will take much longer time than MQM across, especially when the state space is very large. So in practice, we would suggest using MQM across when the state space is large and when there are enough data to mitigate the effect of the approximation. So, um, so like in the case for the power meter uh, tracking data. Additionally, I also would like to mention the composition property of MQM because composition is very important in practice. Um, and we all know that differential privacy can compose very well. But uh, it was shown in the original paper that uh, in general, pufferfish privacy does not compose. So what we want to do is to look at a special case where the algorithm we use to guarantee pufferfish uh, privacy is MQM and when the data comes from Markov chain. So in this case, we would uh, like to show some composition uh, result. 
recall that, uh, that there are two types of composition, um, parallel and sequential. In parallel composition, we run two algorithms, each guarantee epsilon 1, epsilon 2 um, privacy, and then we uh, um, uh, these two algorithms, they run on disjoint subset of the data. And for a sequential composition, we have two algorithms which run on the same data set. For a differential privacy, in the first case, where we will have max epsilon 1, epsilon 2 as our total privacy loss, and in the second case, we are going to have epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. So now let's look at how um, MQM can guarantee for us on Markov chain. So first, for a parallel composition, we assume um, that the um, we have two versions of of MQM running on two disjoint subchain of one Markov chain. So the difficulty uh, uh, of composition here comes from the correlation between the two subchain. So basically, if we publish some statistic on the first subchain, then this will also reveal information on the second subchain due to correlation. But uh, we have shown that if we use MQM to do the two uh, release, then if the two chains they are long enough and their uh, distance are also uh, they are also far away from each other, then this whole release will guarantee max epsilon one epsilon two pufferfish privacy. So uh, which matches the result for differential privacy. And then uh, let's look at sequential composition. So uh, so here again the correlation can cause us trouble because of the correlation. Once we publish some statistic on the Markov chain, then this published result may give us much more information on the chain than in the case when data are independent of each other. So in fact, we can show some negative result that if we run two uh, algorithm M1 and M2, which are not uh, Markov gold mechanism, but more general power fish, uh, more general algorithm that satisfy uh, puffer fish privacy. If this two algorithm guarantee epsilon one, epsilon two puffer fish privacy, then the whole process may not guarantee epsilon one plus epsilon two puffer fish privacy. However, we show that if the two relays are done using MQM, then this whole process can always guarantee epsilon one plus epsilon two puffer fish privacy, which also matches the result for differential privacy. So we believe this uh, composition properties can make MQM more useful and more attractive in real applications. So as a summary, I have talked about the two algorithms we proposed. The first is called the Weiss mechanism, which is the first general algorithm for puffer fish privacy. And the second, I talk about the Markov quote mechanism, including the Markov quote and max influence we defined um, uh, to capture the uh, property of Markov chain. And I also showed some experimental result on synthetic real life Markov chain, and also showed the composition property of um, uh, MQM, which matches the result for differential privacy. Yep, this is the first mechanism. Time for two questions. Two questions. Two questions. Two questions. I have a question. Um, so uh, you know, you you present results for sort of first order Markov chains, but mm -hmm. does it just sort of extend pretty straightforwardly to you know eighth um, order Markov chains? You got, you cut condition and still work for your. Yeah, so so basically in all our definition for max influence and the Markov code, they are not restricted to Markov chain, so uh, we can still like they can still work for a general vision. Well, what about the but, composition results? Uh, the uh, the composition is a bit harder uh, for general Bayesian net, but I believe for the sequential composition, we can show that. So so basically, for composition to work, what we want is what we hope is that all the all the algorithms they are using the same Markov code. So if we can guarantee this, then we can still compose. Or in the uh, in like if we want to relax the result a little bit for Bayesian network, what we can say is that. Uh, the whole process guarantee uh, k times the max among all the individual uh, guarantee. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much.